Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. So who is your God? Jesus. Well, oh, a lot of us, I know it's not. It's just not. We can say it's our God, but we truly have something in place of Him. You know? We might worship Him, but we're also worshiping something else behind it. And that's our true God. That's what we serve. That's what we're enslaved to. We cannot break free from it because we will not give it up. Or we will not give in to the idea that God loves you so much that He gave His only Son for you. And that God came down and became flesh for you. But he was always at the beginning. He was always there. He has always been here. And that's the belief we need to be restored. That's the belief we need to kick the God off the chair, off the podium that we have on there, the drugs, the people, the whatever it may be, the food, the, the ideas, the, idol, you know, the idolatry, the greed, whatever God you have up there, you need to believe in the true God and kick that God off. That's the only way to do it only way. You can't do it yourself. He has to be the one. He took the sacrifice to be the one. I can attest to his powers, his miracles, his truth. I am standing here because of it. I have been in your shoes. I have walked in your shoes. I have been in places where I should not have been. Where I should not have came out alive, but somehow God intervened. Somehow he knew the right time to intervene in my life to bring me out. God has always been calling me, just as he's calling you right now. He's calling you to get off your butts and do something. He's calling you to stop serving yourself and serve him. He's saying stop being selfish. Stop serving yourself and do what I made you to do. Love me and love others beyond all things. There's no drugs, there's no alcohol, there's no people, there's no money, there's no jobs that, can, that you can do those things in. That's not going to make it. That's not going to work. But you can take all those things, because all those things are God-given. You can take all those things and use them for His purposes. I go to work for him, not myself. I get paid for him, not myself. That was probably the greatest choice I've ever made. When I broke the bondage of money to me and him. It broke me from the world that bonded me so... It, it, it just took me... I, I wanted to be the best of the best. I wanted to be CEO type person. That's the attic in me. I want to go as far as I can. And guess what? That replaced God. So when I was able to leave that alone, something happened. A miracle. A uh, uh, separation from materialism. A separation from the world. He weaved that all in me at the beginning when I was in my mother's womb. I just had to bring it out. I just had to allow him to open my eyes to see it. Let's pray. Lord, I just uh, ask you to reveal what our counterfeit gods are to us, Lord. I ask you to reveal the idols that are in our hearts, that are in our minds, that we serve daily, Lord. Father, I just ask that you show us the way to destroy the bondage to those idols. Father, I, I, I'm laying it all down right now. I'm laying my life down. I, I ask that you take it and you mold it. And Father, I just ask that if anybody else is laying their life down right now, that you take it and you mold it into an uh, image of you, an image bearer, Lord, one who has the aroma of life, Father, I ask for restoration in our lives, recovery, breaking of chains, Lord, family reunions, Lord, healings. Be with all those who aren't here tonight as well. Remind them who they are. Wake up their hearts, Lord. 
In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So tonight we're going to be in John 1. And first of all, uh, I, I just want to give a hand to all these people that came from Sunrise and just say that it's uh, stepping out. You're, you're giving something a chance that you don't know anything about, or that you might have a false idea about, or you know everything about, and you just fell off. What happens? I can attest to that. But I think about the beginning of life frequently, all the time. Like I, I, I think about how it happened, and why it happened, and what happened there. If any of you could get a chance to read Genesis, I ask you to take that because I ask you to see how God uses words to create life. Words, breath. We see in John 1, he didn't just use words here. He used something completely unique to him to give us life. John 1, 1 through 5, we see John depicting the creation moments and how they happen. What we see is that the Word was with God. And we see John showing us that Jesus was fully human and fully God. Get some Bibles. We'll, uh, if you guys come again, we'll try to get some new Bibles. We got some new Bibles. Actually, go back there. So I'm going to go and, uh, I gave them all recovery Bibles. They just didn't bring them. Oh, okay. I see how you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're drug addicts, man. We're, just, we're, we're burnt out, man. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a lot of stuff, man. We're, we're here, though, so. Trust yeah. me. My wife needs to say I see a lot of stuff. Here, here I am. Yep. Amen. Here you are. Here you are. Just where I was, too. Yeah. Same spot. Just for you guys to know, I, I went to Sunrise Center six times over ten years ago. I made it through twice. The last time I made it through, I decided that I did not commit myself to recovery, so I turned myself back into jail after 11 months. Around Christmas time. Then I went to Harbor Hall. That was quite the treat. <laughs> you know, to get the guts to turn myself back in the jail, saying that I really screwed this up. I was horrible here. I did not do anything these 90 days. But that myself. It, it was quite the turnaround that year in 2007. And, uh, and it still took 2010 for me to give my life over. You know? A lot of tribes. Nine, eight times. I think my first treatment center was in West Branch at Detox Center when I was 17. My mom made me go. This lady right here. Hey, mom. <laughs> Yelling at me. <laughs> Can't be doing this. I shouldn't have done. I'm lucky. I'm not. I, I am blessed. I, I have been given grace, and thank God that I listened. Because my friends didn't. And just like you guys, you and gals, those who have lived a life in there, probably some of your friends are dead as well. Some family maybe too. And it's our time. But we see here that in, in John 1, it, it's, it's different than the first so, Matthew is the start of the New Testament, okay? You got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the Synoptic Gospels. They, they are the, the truth, the, the, um, the depiction, the biography of Jesus' life. Then you got John, who does the same thing, but he shows you from a different perspective. He shows you the miracles. He shows you the love that was intertwined in it. And, and it's uh, 
John is a beautiful book and how it starts. It's just amazing if you can think about it and try to picture what was going on. What we see is that the Word was with God, and we see a capital W when we see in the beginning was the Word. We see John showing us that Jesus was fully human and fully God. Yes, we see Jesus himself as a man on earth. But one thing is, he fully never stopped being the eternal God. Never stopped the whole time. He always existed. He is the source of eternal life. This is the foundational truth about Jesus. And this is a truth we must come to have faith in. If we don't come to have faith in this truth, there will not be enough faith to trust our eternal destiny to him. If you don't come to the basic knowledge of Christ, that he is God eternal, we will not have enough faith to keep going through the process. John wrote this gospel to help guide and build our faith to trust in Jesus Christ so we can come to believe that he is truly and is the Son of God. John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it from the beginning till now. That same power that created the universe is also available to you and is able to be used to create new life from your broken and shattered hopes of a life. That same power you have at your hands, you have at your heart. This light that he's talking about, Jesus, it exposes the darkness in the world and it brings the truth to our eyes and our minds. And this light of light also helps one to see in the darkness. In the darkness. When I first read the five verses, when I, when I read these first five verses, I, I came to see that this word that all things were made and without him nothing was made, I think of a sewing string. I can't, this was what I was thinking about. I was just trying to depict my thoughts. I thought of this sewing string that, that is a pure love, okay? And without it, nothing would have life. That means animals, that means nature, that means humans. Nothing would have life without this sewing string putting you together. Everything would be dull without it. Nothing would have life. What God did is sowed the string of pure love throughout creation of all creation to bring life. And here I am just thinking about this, like trying to wrap my mind around through him all things were made. Through him all things were made. I have come to find out that without Christ, without his atonement, which means his forgiveness and mercy that brings us to at one with him. Atonement at one with. Okay, remember that. Atonement. Without that, I would still be living in the darkness. The shame that I carried would always be there. It would lead me right back to drugs, to false idols, to things that aren't of life but appear evil. From the study notes of the Life Application Bible, it says in Greek philosophy, the word was the principle of reason that governed the world. 
or the thought still in the mind. While in Hebrew thought, the word was another expression of God. So the word means God. John's description shows clearly that he is speaking of Jesus, a human being that knew and loved, but at the same time, the creator of the universe. Imagine. The universe revelation of God, the living picture of God's holiness, the one in whom all things hold together. You got to think about two Jewish readers when they read this, the word was God. That's blasphemy. To Greek readers, the word became flesh was unthinkable. Unthinkable. It's hard to think about that, right? It's hard to imagine that. That the word became flesh. The good news, the gospel, became flesh. To John, this new understanding of the word was gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. So I want you all to take away that this is the source of all life. And it is the true beautiful light of the world. It is where you'll find the source of power. You'll find the source for a courage, for recovery and restoration of oneself. When you believe in this light and in this truth of his words, that is when eternal life and true and pure recovery is found. And it is yours when it's found. Verse 6, it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. Remember that word, all. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. So we have this man who received, okay, this is just the beginning of John. He, he kind of goes through a quick, he goes through creation real quick. Now he's over to Jesus when he's 30 years old. He's got three years of Jesus' life to depict before he dies. And he was resurrected. So we have this man who received this message to prepare the way for people. To teach people basic principles of Christianity. Repentance and forgiveness. Basic principles. When you come to God, what does he ask you to do? Repent, and he will forgive. To believe, and he'll forgive. So what I like here is the words it uses in verse 7. It says, so that through him all might believe. Okay? Right there tells me that everyone has been given the chance to come to the light. Not uh, that none of us are special or elected to go, but we are free to choose our own path. So where you are is where you got yourself. Because of your choices and nobody else's. And that's amazing. That's free will at the basic level. So now you have a choice. It doesn't matter how bad you are. It doesn't matter if you murdered somebody. It doesn't matter if you did nothing. If you lived a righteous life and you think you're prideful and amazing. But you're not. You're really not. So it's not boasting on yourself. But all those people, anybody has the chance to come to Jesus. There are people out there that think they are special. Okay? They think they are the elected because it says a few words of predestination in it, in the Bible. But right here you can see John says all. He doesn't say the predestined, those who God forechose to go to heaven. So you can go to heaven, but not you. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. You go to heaven. You go to heaven. You're going to hell. You're going to heaven. Well, you know, that's not how it works. That is insane. Free will does not exist if that's how it works. That means it is chosen for you. Your destination is chosen. So you might as well sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. Do what you want, do what you please, but at one point you are coming to Jesus. Because you are predestined to go. Something will happen. It's right there. So I want, I want to remind you that this John that prepared the way is not the same John who wrote this book. This is the John the Baptist. Very humble guy. Very humble. 
We, like John the Baptist, have to, have to come to the conclusion we are not God. We can't fix our own problems. You tried, right? Look at where you ended up at. With me. <laughs> you set us up. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we have to come to that conclusion that we're not God. We are not the source of light. We are like reflectors, okay? We are supposed to reflect the light of Christ to those who are broken. We're supposed to stand against the things that affect and destroy this world. All of you men, you know, how we're so overtaken by men, are doing a horrible job at being men. Did you know that? A horrible job. I'm not saying you specifically. But it could be you. I don't know. Did you raise your kids right? Did you work your tail off to provide? While well, you love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind? Did you lay down your life for somebody? What did you do? Get a divorce? Walk away? Decided to go serve yourself instead of hanging out with the kids? Decided that, you know, we're just going to be lazy and not do anything. We're not going to go protect the people of this world, of our community, because we want to sit on our butts and be men. Because we're so strong. Yeah, we're so bad. We stand up for ourselves. Truly, you're just reflecting an image that is false. And guess what? You're softer than tissue paper underneath all that. Truly in your heart, like I said, there's this thread that comes threaded inside of you, okay? And truly, if we rip the layers off of you, that is there. And that love will drive you to do amazing things. Not for yourself, not for other people, but for God. And because you do it for God, it will be done for other people, not yourself. But you have to Rip the layers of that onion off. Act like, stop acting like you know everything. You don't. You don't know nothing. Not a dang thing. Just like me, I, I knew nothing. I still don't know anything. I'm still at the basic layer, the vulnerable layer of, you know, that I tell people how I feel and I show them my weaknesses and John the Baptist was a man. He set everything aside to eat honey. What, crickets? I can't remember. Locusts. Locusts, crickets, yeah. Locusts. Locus. Set everything aside just to do that fair way for Jesus. He set aside his own agenda. Are you willing to do that? Same with you women. Stop making men fall. There's only two women in here, so I can't really, you know, go hard. But respect men. As people, we are not meant to make other people stumble. And if what you're doing is making other people stumble, you need to quit it. Whatever it may be, you need to stop. supposed to be about each other. We're supposed to be reflectors that affect this world and not destroy it. So remember John the Baptist that we are never to present ourselves as the light. We don't always have the answers. We don't even have the answers. We are not the light. We are here to always to point them to Christ, the true light. He is the way, the truth, and the life. That's it. Verse 
verse 9, it says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was on his own, and but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of, the, not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Isn't it crazy that even though Jesus Christ created the world, even those closest to him, to him even those today that still... They still don't recognize exactly who he is. The entire Old Testament points towards him. The entire Old Testament. The whole 66 books of the Bible points towards him and nobody else. But his disciples rejected him. Those who was closest to him rejected him. So don't you think they're going to reject him? Probably. They rejected him when it came time to stand up for their beliefs. So it is hard, and I'll never say it's easy and simple. It is very complex. But because even though we believe, we don't show it to those who are lost. When is the last time you guys are not, you guys are free from this, but when is the last time you brought somebody to church? Somebody that actually came into the building and, you know, church. When was the last time? Most of the time we don't do those things. And a lot of times they don't come. It's not because of us. Well, maybe. Well, there's this painted, there's this terrible picture of Americanized Christianity. And they are scared. The people that we invite or that we don't invite, but we want to, are scared because they are not perfect. And we portray ourselves as perfect. You know what people, all those who welcome Jesus Christ as Lord of their lives are reborn spiritually. They receive new life from God. Through faith in Christ, this new birth will change you from the inside out. It will rearrange your attitudes and emotions. It will destroy the false desires, the motives you seek out. Being born makes you alive, guys and gals, and it makes you show truth to those who don't believe. But you must truly be reborn, not just be churchgoers. We've got enough of them. Being born of God makes you spiritually alive. And it puts you in the greatest family around. But guess what? Very few walk that path. And many take the wide road and they are just fans of Jesus. They love what the church does. They love the worship music. They love getting together. But when it comes down to it, when it comes time to it, they're not going to lay their life down. They're going to join the other side. Because they never really gave their life up in the first place. So the word became flesh and it made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. So what does it mean when it says the word became flesh? It means God became human. Why? Why did he become human? Make an example. Good answers, all of you. You gotta think about God needed to know he needed to be gone through the process of being us, what he created. He had to give us that example of how to live. 
He went through all the same pains we go through. I'm telling you, all of them. He had women washing his feet, doing things. And what do you think might have crossed his mind if he was just a regular man? What? So don't you think he was tempted at those times? Yes. But he did not give in to temptation. So I know tonight there's a lot about teaching stuff. I mean, a lot of theology. But there's also a lot of how you will overcome being a slave in this time. These are teachings we need to know. When Christ became flesh, he became the perfect teacher in his life. We get to see how God thinks and interacts, therefore teaching us how we should think. Which goes in, Jesus should be your perfect example on how to live your life. Not anything else but Jesus. He should be your example. He isn't just the perfect example. He also gives the power to carry it out. You know that little phrase, right? The power to carry it out. He gives the power. Not just some random God that you believe in. Trust me, I hit that door for a lot of years. I believed in the same God, but I didn't believe in the cross. It wasn't until I believed in the cross that I became alive. It was Jesus who came as a sacrifice for all of our sins. His death satisfied the requirements for the removal of sin that God put in place. Because of Christ was born, it was time let's see. Because of Christ was born, it was time he became fully man and fully God. I know that's hard to understand, like I said, because I have a hard time understanding, but you have to put your faith in it. It takes faith. That's all it does. Take faith. Sometimes you just got to take faith, man. You just got to do it. You got to trust. You have faith in so many other things. Why not faith in it? Give it 90 days. I dare you. If you don't believe in Jesus, I, 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 I ask that, that you truly, with your heart, you give yourself over. There's no prayer I can really say that, that will bring you to Jesus. It's all of you. It had nothing to do with me. Just like John, he just prepared the way. He didn't give the way. And just like me, I'm trying to prepare the way for you to truly believe in Jesus. To truly believe in the Trinity. To truly believe in life. But finally, you can give back to society. Finally, you can live in eternity. So guess what? God just doesn't want you just sitting around enjoying your life. Instead, he wants you to dig into his word and learn about these things. Then he wants you to go put them into practice because of this, Christ will help you become holy and righteous. It'll take long times. It'll, it'll take time. Jesus Christ came to us to bring us God's unfailing love and forgiveness and to reveal God's faithfulness to us. God's forgiving grace says, I will forgive you for your wrongs. I love and accept you freely for the person you are. His faithfulness says, I will follow through on all I have promised. He will set you free if you give in to him. Just got to give in. Stop fighting the fight. You lost the war, man. We ain't women. We got one more song, but during this time, I need somebody to come hand these out. Uh, those who have phones, those who have not done this survey, or the second survey, um, we really want to get these surveys done, okay? These surveys will help us be a better church. These surveys will help us to learn how to uh, give to you guys what you guys need as a church. And we're asking you to do these tonight during the song. It's kind of a long song, but this song is a song that helped me to surrender my life. Tell them to go to a website. Huh? Tell them to go to Shoreline Facebook to do it. To do that. Uh, yeah, and all you guys who are watching, everybody on Facebook and YouTube, please go to Shoreline Westland Church Facebook page 
you'll find the survey there, survey monkey, something, something, something. It's quick, it's easy, it's a few questions. It talks about, do you hate Brendan, Tyson nice Brendan or not? Please, put yes, I don't know, whatever you think. I mean, yes, we hate you. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> But uh, I don't know. Any of you guys that have them, do them when you can. Okay? Just do them when you can. You guys can. You guys can come in here, I'm sure, for a little while. Oh. I'm glad that you guys got to come. So, i in your shoes. Uh, let's pray. We'll be done. Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for bringing us the truth tonight. I ask that the, this truth, this word that you have given us, be planted deeply in our hearts, Father, and that you water and grow it through the Holy Spirit. Lord, bring us to a place where it's just you and us. Help us to get rid of any uh, things that are annoying us, any things that are taking our focus away from you. Father, I just ask that you break the chains of bondage on our lives and keep breaking them day after day, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this life. Thank you for what's to come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So there's one more song, then you guys be done. God, we look to you tonight.